everybody loves doing proofs, right? In some of our earlier lessons, we went from a hypothesis, which has like, typically it's, I don't know, something that is on one side of this, if and only if, or equals, and what we're trying to do is show that those two things are equivalent. And the hypothesis says, we think this is true. And we went through a bunch of known laws in order to get, or known theorems, in order to get to that, that to show that equality, to show if and only if. And once we did that, then this became one of the theorems that we could work from. Now, the problem is, is that sometimes it's not always intuitive how this path goes, especially for people that are new to math. Wouldn't it be cool if we could just show that this was true for every possible case? Now, if we're talking about real numbers or anything else, or even integers, things like this, it's impossible to do. Why? Because there are an infinite number of these. But right now, we're talking about propositional logic. And propositional logic does have a limited number of possibilities when it comes to proving things. Now, remember what we're talking about here are these propositions P, which can take on values of true or false, nothing else. And so, for each possible proposition that's going to be addressed in our compound propositions, we only have two possible values. And remember, these compositional statements like P or Q and S, these, these compound statements, each one of these propositions can take on two values. Well, the easiest way to organize these is something called a truth table. Now a truth table, well, like I was saying before when we first opened up this lesson, a truth table gives us the opportunity to view every possible combination of true and false for a set of propositions. So for example, the one that I just erased, PQS, how many ways can we list uh, trues and false for each one of those propositions? Turns out there's a really easy way to figure this out. So let's say that I have P. Well, it can either be a true or a false, right? Well, if I have P along with Q in some sort of a compound statement, well, every time P is true, that means that Q can also be either true or false. And every time that P is false, then Q can also be either true or false. That means that based on a setting of P and a setting of Q, then if it's just P by itself, there are only two ways it can be. But if it's P along with Q together in a compound statement, then we can either have both of them true, P true and Q false, P false and Q true, or both of them false, which gives us a total of four possible ways that we can have a combination of trues and false for P's and Q's. Well, if we had S along with it, well, whenever both P and Q are true, then S can be either true or false. Whenever P is Q and true and Q is false, then S can be true or false. And that is the same also for P is false, Q is true, and for both P and Q are false. And so notice that every time we add another proposition to our list, we double the number of possible combinations of trues and falses that we can come up with. This means that if there's one element, then, then we have two possible combinations. If we go to two elements, that becomes four. If we go to three elements, that becomes eight, which means that if we have n propositions, then we have two to the n possible combinations here. A truth table has a specific format. And what you're looking at is on the left side of the truth table, you list or make columns for each of the propositions. 
And whenever we're talking about a list of the propositions, we are talking about the atomic propositions, the base level ones, the ones that make up the compound, the, the compound proposition. Now, whenever you work through a problem, through work through one of these compound propositions, it's a lot like when you're working through an algebra problem. Remember PEMDAS, the order of operations? Well, the order of operations for PEMDAS was something like parentheses and then exponents and then multiplication and then division and addition and subtraction, right? Well, we have a similar order of operations when it comes to compound propositions. So what we've got here is the list of all of our propositions. So these are things like our P, Q, R, S, things like that, the atomic level propositions. But what we're looking at on this side is a progression, okay? And the progression is just like applying the order of operations. It's the progression through the order of operations for a compound proposition. And so what we will see is that, first of all, the atomic propositions, they, they're very simple, but then we'll have one operation like an and or an or, and that will have just one column, which will show the result from all the combinations of, one, of trues and falses or ones and zeros that we have on this side, taking us to the first step. And then as we go through our order of operations, we're gonna create more columns until we get to a final column, which defines exactly what the result of that compound proposition is, based on all of our possible inputs, all of our possible values for the atomic propositions. Now, one thing to be aware of is that a lot of, in, in a lot of math texts, you'll see that they'll list the true, 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 or the all trues case at the top, and the all false case at the bottom, and work their way through. Please understand, I'm an electrical engineer. I've studied digital electronics for many, many years. I am used to representing the list of possible combinations instead starting at the top with the all false case and alternating back and forth with the the, the, the rightmost column. So for example, I have three, I have three uh, uh, possible propositions here. So that means half of the P's or exactly half of each one of them are going to be false and half are going to be true. And then Q's, the first two would be false, the next two would be true, then we have two falses, then we have two trues. And for the last column, we have false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. All right, and that will give us all the possible combinations for each one of the propositions. I happen to do it, all falses at the top, all trues at the bottom. Now, sometimes you'll see a lot of math text starting with all trues at the top. Now, another thing is, is since I'm an electrical engineer, I like dealing with logic ones and logic zeros. So you may see some of my truth tables going all zeros to all ones. And so what you've got is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and then all ones. All right. And so that's just an idea of what you'll see whenever we organize all the rows of our truth tables. Now, one last thing before we wrap up this short lesson. If I've got a truth table and I've listed all my possible combinations for all my propositions on the left-hand side, and after going through the progression, through the order of operations for my, uh, for my compound proposition, if the last column is all trues, Typically what we're doing is we're trying to define that this particular, this particular proposal, this hypothesis is true for every possible combination. We have something called a tautology. Now a tautology is basically really simple. It is a truth table where all of the, for every possible combination of inputs or every possible combination of propositions, we have a true result. In our next video, we'll talk about some basic truth tables at the level of the atomic proposition. After that, we'll start combining them to derive truth tables for compound propositions.